Well, hello, everybody. How are you today? Thank y'all for joining us for uh, another episode of Outside the Box. We have uh, our last uh, 21 questions uh, uh, show today. And we have with us the great Reverend Dr. Bishop Kevin Foreman. Bishop hey, Foreman, how are you? I'm good, Bishop. Oh, you listen with that type of an intro. My God, listen. I'm you, sir. You're great. Come on here. The Bible says he'll make your name great. That's Bible, yes, sir. sir. That's the Bible, sir. That's the Bible. Well, thank you, sir, for uh, for joining us tonight. I'm uh, I'm ready to get started, John. Uh, figure out what you're gonna be asking me. Well, 21 questions. So, you know, here's the deal. Uh, you are, you know, I tease you all the time for being just head stuff that I say, Bishop. And, you know, so I'm about to get you tonight. I am so excited to be sitting in this seat because I'm coming for you. And I are you I coming for me for real? Question number one, Derek Jackson. I want to hear your thoughts, views about the Derek Jackson situation. Um, he's apparently an individual who has uh, had some popularity as it relates to uh, relationships and things like that. And, and he's come uh, to where some allegations have been lodged against him. Um, as a public figure, I know what it is for people to say things and sometimes to be baseless. Uh, I want to hear what you think about um, that situation. That's question number one. If I'm starting there, just imagine where we're going. That's question number one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I can tell you, in this is one of the few, few things and few occasions where I'm not as well versed as I would normally be concerning some things. But I will tell you this, what I, what I do know is that it is really easy to attack someone who is public. Right. I secondly know that when you specifically specialize in an area of concern, that makes it that much more inviting for people to tear your reputation, whatever it's tied to. Right. The third thing I'll say, and, and none of this is, uh, you know, in defense or in um rejection of him. Um, the, the third thing I'll say, though, is that rather than be the kind of person with regard to church folks that I have been talking about these last three weeks, I don't know all the details. Yeah. And so it's really hard to make a... By the way, the level of petty in that answer you just gave, Oh yeah. So it, it, listen, oh, yeah. I love it. He said, can, rather can, than being like some church folk. Can, can, can I say this? I'm real petty, Bishop. But I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just put it out there. That's, uh, you know, I'm gonna take my shots when I need to. Okay. <laughs> listen, no, look, I'm not mad at you. I, I, think uh, some of that's I, I just think that to immediately jump on the side of what we've heard without having heard it all uh, sets a bad tone for all parties concerned because it could be you the next time. Oh, listen. So, yeah. I, you know, what I think about, what I love about your answer there, Bishop, is I think that's such a principle for everybody, is you need all the details before you conclude. Absolutely. And one of the worst things to do is to hear a sound bite. I, 
I was, I don't look at the bloggers and things like that. I don't look at that. Um, I, I, I find great uh, issue with looking at information that's based on the degradation of other people and tearing down other people. Like I just can't sit up and watch somebody tear down another person. I don't do that. Um, but I looked at a small clip of one the other day and in doing that on there, you know, they were talking about what I'm going to be another question. They were talking about Kirk and they began to say, you know, well, cause Kirk got divorced and all that. And then the other person said, well, no, he didn't get divorced. And the main person on the show didn't even have a basic fact, right? You didn't even have a fact right about Kirk not having been divorced to 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 his son's uh, mother, and so you know I just thought, oh my God, you're getting on this show and you got almost that individual had almost a million subscribers on YouTube alone, and wow. you're getting on there with no facts. You couldn't even get a basic fact. The first all I looked at was five minutes, and in the first five minutes, you've already spoken something you didn't know to be true. Yet people listen to you as if you are a truth teller and and you present yourself as a person that's got the facts. Like your whole thing is, let me tear him down. We about to get him. And I just thought, how evil. Because but you know, it's a new thing, Bishop. That's that's what a lot of these shows. That's how they thrive. That's how they gain their audiences. That's how they do because they are the gossip rag, and so they trash people. Um, you know, to get their listeners and to get their likes and. And listen, it, it, it's not about that. You said you were going to go into question two with Kirk Franklin. I'm going to say this is what I've said absolutely before. Uh, number number one, that man is a grown man. And, and there's a word in between grown and man, but I'm going to leave it as he's a grown man. And wow. um, his... Um, uh, I, I can't imagine any one of my grown children coming for me like that. Two, trying to put me on blast. It shows the level of dysfunction. And while that came out, the other thing that I heard that I thought was interesting from the other side, which is Kirk's side, is he said the whole audio wasn't played. If we're going to put it out there, let's put out the whole audio so that everybody has a chance to then examine the full context of where we are, because one of the parts he said that was not included was when he called the therapist to try to talk their family through this situation. But I'm going to tell you something else. Let's say Kirk did none of that. Let's say Kirk is lying. He didn't do that. And the truth is what part we heard, which is him cussing and threatening his son. Right. Okay. Let's say that's all we know. Even if that's all we know, is that is that the best look for Kirk? No, it's not. But guess what? I'll say this again. His stuff was his stuff. Your stuff is your stuff. My stuff is my stuff. And I guarantee you, if somebody took a clip out of my day, that out of my week, they took a small clip of mine and put it on blast, there'll be folks saying, I can't believe he a preacher. I can't believe he's a bishop. I can't believe he calls himself a Christian because the reality is my 24-7, 365 ain't all right. It ain't all juicy. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm telling you, I am human. I have, I make bad choices. I make mistakes. I say dumb stuff. I do dumb things. It's not intentional, but it is a reality of who we all are. And if we don't, Stop being on the bandwagon. I guarantee you our time will come. And you know what I love about your answer? That's why we need Jesus, because it's not all perfect. It's not all together all the time. That's why we need Jesus. Um, and I'll just say this to you, because you didn't get to my second question about Kirk Franklin. I just want to add this. And if any of your grown children did, ever consider that they want to be having to talk to my wife and come up with bail money to get me out of jail. I would have been on the first Southwest flight, and I say Southwest because I can pick my time. I would have been on the first <laughs> on the first Southwest flight to Austin, Texas. Because listen, you wouldn't have fought that fight by yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. Just, listen, I wrote that's the kind of loyalty I roll with. That they, they would have learned that day that they, thou shalt not sit against the men of God. I'm trying to tell you, sir. All right. 
Question number three. All right, here we go. Question number three. Coke or Pepsi? Absolutely Coke products. Okay. Uh, I, I am not, the only cola I drink is Dr. Pepper, which is weird. Uh, but that's because that's what my wife got me drinking. Um, but uh, but I am a Coke products person. And if I were to drink, whether it's a Coke or a Pepsi, I think Coke is just superior. Got you. I AFC or Popeyes? Who? AFC or Popeyes? Shonday for Popeyes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The spice. That, pop. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, now here's my next question. You ready? You ready? Okay. Yes. Popeyes or church? You know, I used to roll with churches, but they did something to change their stuff. So I'm oh, not you God brought you over churches. To the you know, when you first met me, three days ago, like, we going to churches. churches. I was I, going to churches. I said, gross. I said, why are you going to churches? <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you something. True people from Texas know churches chicken growing up. That's what we had. That was the absolute bomb. Y'all need to go to church. You don't go to churches. <laughs> this is the problem, y'all. Church hopping. Y'all need to go church to church. Church hopping. Uh -huh. All right, listen. All right, listen. All right, all right. All right. so here's what I said to you. Um, if you were not living in Austin, Texas, what city would you live in? You know, that's an interesting question. To be honest, if I were not in Austin, more than likely I would move to Atlanta. I would move to Atlanta. Why would you move to Atlanta? That's question seven. I think that I would move to Atlanta because there is a uh, we we lived there for six months in two thousand and eight, I believe it was, um, and it was it was a different culture uh, and a different type of people that. Um, is very different. And to be to be real honest, I saw more of me there than I see of me here. And just for your question, can you qualify what you mean by you? I saw more uh, people of color uh, who were successful, who were educated, who were um, ab about their business. Not that there are not people like that here. I'm certainly not saying that, but I'm just saying that there's so people of color have a greater level of leadership in that city they have a greater level of uh influence in that city and um it just is what it is so i would be living there well you know you remember one of our early trips to in atlanta that you and i we had together on behalf of one of the boards that we sit on uh you remember one of our our first meeting at that trip was we had the chief of staff of the mayor you had the county commissioner you had the sheriff you had every high-ranking official every high-ranking official sitting at the table having you know having breakfast after church having grits and biscuits and eggs <laughs> yeah and you, and you remember yeah. they uh they actually picked us up and drove us around in limousines and uh fed us Oh, I was driving fast. Do you remember I was sliding in the back of that other limo? Uh -huh. I was sliding over. That, that man was going so fast because we had to get you were uh, the, there was two different two or three different services. I think I do one, do another, then go back you know, to where we started. I think it was three exactly. services. Exactly. Right. No, and three you know it was also in Atlanta where I saw, and this is just a little something that I saw my first black card um, mm. that you paid. Mm, uh, right. It was in Atlanta that I saw my first black card, like in real life, and I was like, "Oh, I want a black card! I want a black card!" And uh, and the guy, uh, the pastor, uh, who he's like, he was like, "Bishop, you got to be invited to have one of these." I say, "Well, they ain't sent me no invitation." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Now you can invite yourself to get a black card. Now you can. Oh, can you? Yes, yes. Things have changed. But you know, well, that's a, that's all. That now you get, but and then they, you know they got the knockoff Mastercard back now too. Yeah, yeah, I do so, know that. So okay, all right. So all right, Bishop. Here's my next question. Your favorite gospel song? Um, my favorite gospel song. Huh. You, you know, I can tell you recently, and when I say recently, over the last 
six years, it's changed. It's really old now. Um, but uh, that's that song by um, Charles. Uh, can't think of his last name right now. Um, but um, Charles uh, Charles Jenkins. Oh, okay. Awesome. Uh, oh, okay. I, uh, that is awesome. awesome. He can heal. Yeah, uh, I over the last six or seven years, that's really become my favorite song because. It, it really, thank you, uh, Michelle, you said awesome. Yeah, um, uh, Jenkins. Yeah, because I think it just really, it's become kind of- um, I can't see her comment, Bishop. Where's the comment at? I gotta see oh, her comment. Uh, I gotta see the saints comments. Come on, Michelle. He thank said you. Jenkins. Jenkins. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that song, Awesome, just now, over the last six years, has become my like favorite thing because it's real like, it's like an anthem for me that no matter what yeah. kind of I'm facing, uh, I, I know that God is awesome. And no, and, and watch this, he can move mountains. You yeah. know, those things that seem insurmountable, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just, so yeah, that song is like my favorite one now. I like that. You ready? Yes. Your favorite secular song. My favorite secular song. You know, uh, I talked uh, about this in terms of artists before, but um, that Luther Vandross here and now. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, Let me, okay. That, that, that disministers to you because he shook his head. <laughs> the man shook his head. Uh, he I shook, shook my head. I shook my head. head. Yeah. Okay, Bishop, let me ask it another way. That's good. Here and now. I like that song. I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. What's your favorite ratchet song? Ooh. Now I'm gonna tell you, this ain't popular no more. I'm gonna tell you, it's it's not popular Come no on, more. Bishop, do not disappoint uh, with your answer, Bishop. Come well, on. Because uh, now I have to give all of these uh, disclaimers. Uh, because, uh, but um um uh oh, it me trying to disclaim it made me uh, uh forget. I'm trying to think of how I go. Um, it's uh, the R. Kelly song um, about um, mm -mm, uh, Jesus. What is that song? The R. Kelly song. Uh, it's the oh ignition. That's the what it is. Ignition <laughs> by R. Kelly. <laughs> uh, ignition. Ignition by R. Kelly. That's my favorite ratchet song. It's the remix of really, ignition. I don't know if that really, really counts as ratchet. I, I think that's more just R and B. I don't know that that really fits in ratchet. Like, oh, like, I don't know. I guess I don't know ratchet then. Uh, but sipping on coke and rum, I'm like, so what? I'm drunk. We're <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we about to have me some fun. Ah, listen, B B. Listen, clearly yeah. you know that one. Okay. All right, okay, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Like, you remember when Will of Fortune took over the judges? We'll accept that. <laughs> but it doesn't really fit. It doesn't really fit. Hey, guys, if you're enjoying this show, let us know that you're enjoying. It's his show, but I'm asking the questions, so I'm in charge. So just uh, let us know you're enjoying the show, uh, 21 questions. I want you to put a question you want to hear from Dr. Bright. I want you to type a question in the chat that you want to hear as an answer for him. And Bishop, I'm probably going to get you done pretty early. You know, this is what I do is this digital stuff. So, you know, I love this. So I'm probably going to get you done early. So if you got a question for Dr. Bright uh, 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 or just in general, we'll take a question. So make sure that you put that in. Let us know that you're enjoying on every platform. Because you're on what? Facebook now, YouTube now, Facebook and YouTube? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, sir. All right, here we go, Bishop. Question number 11. See, Q says it definitely qualifies. Thank you, Q. Yeah, Thank you know, you. I, I don't see it qualifying. I and Nina qualifying. says, this is great. Thank you, Nina. I, and, I, and, and, and watch this. Um, Angela Joyce, she said, yeah. Come on, Harvester. Come on, Harvester. They're, they're yeah. Harvest, people. They're, we, we, Harvest people, we support the men of God. Come on. And and Michelle says laugh out loud, and Karen says laugh out loud. They are, they know what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. I, I, listen, the, I looked over to the judges. The judges <laughs> said it will take the answer. We don't think it fits, but we'll take the answer. I, all right. So, all right. So here's my next question. Here's my next question. What's been the greatest 
challenge in your life so far? You know, it's interesting that you would ask that question because um, let me, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put something out here and I'm doing it because it makes me have to kind of be accountable for what I've taught and for what I said. I, um, my greatest, my greatest challenge is um, I'm still grieving since 2012 from the death of my grandmother. And I have, I, I need to, to move forward. I need to deal with that. And so today was my first day. I, I started grief counseling. Mm. And um, I've always had the answers for everybody. And I need, I need somebody to have the answers for me this time. And so I believe in, and I've said this before, I believe that counseling is a healthy thing to do. And this is the first time I've ever done it myself. So, wow, that's really good. Let, let's pause right here. Uh, how many watching right now? You are dealing. You have dealt with some type of grief. You've dealt with some type of grief. Just do the hand wave emoji if you're watching now. While they're responding, I am going to disconnect these ear pods because I'm going to disconnect them. All right, Bishop, you can hear me. Oh yeah, I can hear you well. There we go. Um, how many of you have dealt with some type of grief? You know, Bishop, I think one of the best things people could do, even for Harvest, we still make, um, I still do one-on-ones to walk with people through a variety of issues, but especially things like that, um, because grieving is a whole process. I want to ask you this question. This is really still part of question 11. What, you said since 2012, so you're talking about nine years, what stopped you from starting the process of grieving? I what I have come to really know and learn from myself is that I haven't been willing to accept it. Right. I live it every day, but um, I, I think when it got to today, what I realized just in my conversation is because I haven't accepted it because to accept it makes it real. Right. And I don't want it to be real. Right. Here's you what know? I want you to do, Bishop. I know it's 21 questions, but listen, we're men of God. I want you to pray, if you would, sir, for those that are in your audience that are still grieving, that they would, five steps of grief. Acceptance is the final stage. What's, what's interesting is although acceptance is the final stage, you have to actually accept it to start the first stage. Um, because you go from anger to bargaining and, and, and all of that, you go through all of those other stages, but to actually get to that stage, you wouldn't be angry about something that you thought was artificial. You're only angry because you have to accept the reality of it. Would you pray for those viewers that are watching right now that they would navigate through their processes of grief? I think there's a lot of Christians that are in that process and don't even know it. And it's, and it's holding them back. Yeah, because you know what, to be honest with you, I, I think my Pride never let me admit yeah. that I hadn't grieved. Right. Because I'm supposed to be strong. I'm supposed to be this, that, and the other. And I'll be honest with you, I have, um, I think it's affected other areas of my life, this non acceptance. And, and the word that's so interesting, the word that uh, the counselor and I came to today was what I have been doing since 2012 is avoiding. Yeah. And it started making me think about, well, what else have I trained myself to avoid? To avoid? Yeah. I, 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 it's weird because I never even intended to get into this, but I, I, I thank God for the leading because now I wanna, I, I wanna take it further. Let me tell you, what I realized today is that plans that I made with my wife for when our time to pass comes was we were going to be cremated and the ashes were going to be discarded by the facility because the words that I told my kids when we talked about what this was is I don't want you to be burdened mm. 
having to go and visit me at the cemetery, visit mom at the cemetery, or see our ashes that you kept, this, that, and other. So I'm taking away all of that power from you, right? Mm. And when, when I told her that, she said, think about what you just told me. Mm. And I did, and I thought, because this grief has been so heavy that I, I've masked it with everything else, keeping myself busy, doing this, doing this, doing this. You know, I'm 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 getting a, a, another uh, schooling thing done right now, and so I keep filling up my life with things because I've learned how to avoid right. because the burden's been heavy, right? Right. And so what um, I so what I did was I transferred that expectation towards me and my wife onto my kids right. by eliminating their ability to even decide what they wanted to do with sure. it. Sure. I, so it's contractually. I, when I paid it I, and wrote that check, I said, no one can change this, right? But me. And so I'm not going to change it. So they don't have a choice. They have to accept what I did. And I think that that's all about me trying to maintain control because I don't want to accept. Yeah. And I think there's some <laughs> folk listening. And it may not be grief. Maybe it is. But you're trying to control something so much that you have not, because you haven't accepted something, that you're making decisions that affect you adversely and you're not even aware. Because I wasn't even aware right. that that right. was happening. But that's why I said <clears throat> this grief was affecting so many other parts of my life that I wasn't even aware of it, Bishop. And, um, you know, I, I love what you said. You know, you're trying to control it, which, which really avoidance is a form of control. Avoidance. I get to control it because I, uh, I, I, I ended up saying grieving your aunt's passing. Thank you for saying this. Bishop, I want you to take just 15 seconds and pray for those in that grieving process of those who are trying to control something by avoiding it and just pray that, uh, that they would walk in freedom from that, whatever that process looks like, whether that's one-on-one -on -one sessions, whether that's counseling, whether that is through uh, messages, um, you know, all, all of that. Would you just take a moment to pray and then we'll jump back on these questions. But we can't miss a moment to minister. Let's go. Absolutely. God, I bless you. And I thank yes. you for your goodness and your kindness towards us and, and me and us. Even when we screw it up, when we do yes. crazy stuff, when we don't be considerate of the things that we should. I pray right now for all of us, those of us who are experiencing this grief and we fighting against it and we're avoiding and we're not accepting and we're not allowing ourselves to move on and to progress. Please. I pray that you give us the freedom. Yes. The confidence to trust you enough to know that it's okay. It's going to be all right that you have us because your word says, no greater love than a man like this and a man lay down his life for his friends. Yes. He called us friends. And that means that we can rely on you, that we can count on you, and that yes. you have not put more on us than what we can bear. And the fact that we're having to face it means we have the ability to bear it and overcome it. So God, I pray that your peace, which you put in John 14 says, I'll give you peace, uh, but not like man would give, but the peace that passes all, all understanding. You need that peace. I know I do. And if there anybody is like me fighting against the letting go, I pray that you give us the peace and comfort of your spirit that we can be assured that we'll be all right. We'll be okay. It'll be okay. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, if you agree with that prayer, type amen in the comments, whatever platform you're on, type amen with that. Amen is a biblical word that means I agree. And if you agree, um, then you want to let that agreement be known. The Bible says that wherever two or three touch agreeing on anything, it shall be done for them. So when you agree, what you're literally doing is giving yourself the ability uh, to um, to see that manifest in your life. All right, Bishop, we're going to turn the corner. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's turn that corner. Lil Nas X. Ugh. 
Yes. Let out a video please. on the other day. I hadn't seen the video in its totality until today. And I still didn't see it in its totality. I saw I basically fast forwarded through it because I, I my schedule is just very it's just it's always full, but this week is really cool. So I just kind of fast forward and saw it. I said, I said, okay. Lil Nas X um, let out a video of him basically um, giving the devil a lap dance. Um, and, you know, look like he kind of was maybe a little bit more than the lap dance. Um, he was pole dancing and all of that. Um, so many people, Shalom, Chrissy, so many people um, are um, have a variety of different opinions on it. Um, I want to know your opinion specifically on the video. Have you seen the video? Uh, I have not seen the video. I've seen the controversy surrounding the video. What do you think about the controversy? I, I, I think the controversy is probably what the intention really is all about because uh, whether it's good publicity or bad publicity, publicity is publicity. And so it makes folks seek you out and it makes folks curious about who you are and what you got to offer, what you're bringing. Um, like I, kind of in the same vein on the same subject, like I, I read today that Nike is actually suing Lil Nas X because the company, of, the company that made the company, it. yeah, because of the uh, trademark, you know, taking their stuff. So, uh, so I'm just saying, it's all most likely about publicity. Um, this, this, this idea that you know, you got the devil lap dancing you and, and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's- but He was lap dancing him, but I get you. Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. 50 million views on just the primary video. Yeah, 50 million. Listen to what you said, 50 million. Right, and that's just the primary video. Um, So on that, so this is still part of question. I'm on question number 12. I'm doing good on time. Um, I'm on question, uh, can we just send, send him down there? So, so- <laughs> you know, so here's here here's the thing. Lil Nas X, uh, I saw a video where he posted basically saying that um, because he has been told since he was a kid that because of his attraction that he was going to hell, he said, well, now he made a video in what people said about him. Um, I don't want to dig too deep because this is that can become a very long conversation. And the name of the show is 21 questions for the day. But but. I do want to talk about this because there are some Christians that like to focus on what they perceive to be the flaws, the vices, the idiosyncrasies, the sins of other people, and like to point their fingers at other people because it makes them feel good about their own stuff. Mm -hmm. I want your view of how Lil Nas X, you believe, should be handled from a Christian's point of view and a Christian perspective, because even the comment, can we send them down now um, that, that the viewer mentioned? So, you know, and, and I don't, I, I, maybe it was jovial, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But the point is, is that for that young man, his whole life, he's been told God doesn't love him. God hates him. God hates what he does. God hates who he is. That's not true. That God hates him. God hates that. None of that's true. But for his whole life, he's been told that. So to him, you everybody said go to hell so he made a video saying well, i went to hell and while i was in hell i gave the devil a lap dance while it's you know got a whole lot of levels to it i want to hear what you think is the right approach for a christian to have towards a little nas x i i think i think what uh we should have towards little nas x is the same we should have everybody's first is we need to let them know that god's love is not limited to the perfect Right. Sure. I think they can't nobody get none. Because that, exactly. You don't get none. I don't get none. Don't nobody get none. None of, us, none of us get love. Yeah. And so I think maybe the first thing somebody needs to do is tell him, listen, God loves you. And and let that start to marinate. I understand what you've been told, but let me tell you something different. God loves you. Okay. This other thing about um, let you know, sending people to hell. We don't have the qualifiers to do that. No. Uh, and and so the level of again, I think back to judgment. Uh, 
you know, here's the thing. I don't think you have to patronize his business. I don't think you have to listen to his music, but you do have to show him love. And he do need he has to be told that God does love him. Okay. Great point, um and I so I want to flip the coin. I want to flip the coin. Yes, sir. All right. So in pop culture, you see a lot, you see it hurts my that my father's name is been represented here. Wow. It's a discussion about if you don't have dinner or if it's also a little bit messy. Wow. If I went by the side, wow, look at that. If I went by the wow. side, never That's having a right. I would have never come to God. If I went by what I was told, you see what I'm saying? I what I was told. Yeah, and that's why that's so many cast me out, right? See, and, and, I, and I hate that type of Christianity. I hate that type of Christianity. Yeah, because it's not endemic of who God is. No, not at all. Because, because, because again, that's why the scripture says things like work out your own salvation. That's why the scripture says like judge not lest you be judged. Um, you know, it's really oh, easy. The same measure. The same mean. measure. Yeah. Right. So for everybody sending him to hell. You might want to get you some boots too. Just saying. So, Bishop, I'm gonna flip it though. Let's flip the coin. Okay. Right, so here's question 13. I want to flip the coin. Let's flip that coin. Um, this if over effeminization of men, um, where it seems like, and particularly men of color, where the only way they are become mainstream or accepted in mainstream culture or become on or platform or whatever you want to use. Is that there's this effeminization of men where you know you know he's got the the, the the stripper boots and the stripper you know the hair and all that and, and nothing against you know nothing talking negative about anybody but this over feminization of men what do you think about that where the only particularly for black men where everything is you're accepted if you a man a black man just like a woman and i'm not knocking that what i'm saying is this over effeminization of men what do you think about that you know, it's interesting that you say that because um, I was um, I was talking to a friend a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me about uh, some rappers in Houston mm -hmm. um, who were wanting to get signed to uh, a label, mm -hmm. and there was this big party that they uh, got sent to in Atlanta, by the way, where people like P Diddy and you know, those folks were in attendance and um, they said he had to pass the test in order uh, for their backing. And the passing of the test was to be subjugated sexually by another man. So he had to, uh, uh, and, and the thing was, if you want this, you have to submit to this. Mm. And the guy said, well, you know, I don't want it that bad. Mm. Now, let me go and say, then um, there was this story about like uh, Wesley Snipes, who uh, before he was able to get uh, really recognized, he had to do the, what is it, Tu Wong Fu, um, uh, where he had to mm -hmm. uh, dress up as the woman. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, uh, and so there's always, and, and then there's a story where they told, uh, what I've heard is that Denzel Washington was told here, and Denzel Washington say, I'm never going to play a woman. And if that's what it takes, then I will never be what you think I should be. Mm. What, what I think is two things. I think that um, really the attack is on uh, the family. I think it's, I think while it's certainly racial, I think it's, it, it's spiritual because men are required to reproduce. And I think that if you can feminize a man to where he doesn't want to function as we have traditionally understand man to function, then he would be less able to reproduce strong men. So this idea is about uh, feminizing men so that they are not dominant. And so if they're not dominant, they can't produce dominance. Okay. So, okay. So I see what you're saying, just to clarify, because at first I thought you were talking about just from a reproductive standpoint, but you're talking mm -hmm. about in the standpoint of authoritative, dominant leading. Okay. Taking okay. people okay. who take over, people who pursue, overtake, and overcome. People right, who right, say, right. no, I'm getting mine. <clears throat> got it. Got it. 
And, and you see that, you know, with David and somebody that when you say pursue, overtake, recover. Oh, got it. Okay. Got it. All right. Uh, listen, guys, we got 20 minutes left in the show. I want to see your questions. I'm going to leave some time for your questions because I'm going to have my 21 done. I've only got eight more to go. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Um, so, Bishop, Kirk Franklin, I already brought that up. And I talked about. <laughs> you know, people have been saying I needed to look at that P Valley. What is P Valley? What is that? I haven't looked at it. I don't, I don't really know. But I've heard it. What was is that, Michelle? Can you tell me what that is? What is yeah, that? Michelle, what is what is P Valley? I don't know that is. We'll give her a chance to we'll, we'll give her a chance to respond. All right, so so we brought that up. Um so here's the question I want to ask you going back to that. Um you, you have and this really connects to something we already talked about. You have some uh, I saw some comments where people were saying, you know, he needed to step away from ministry because of that. How dumb, how dumb. Why do you say that's dumb? Because um, uh, I remember, um, I remember when um, this was probably 25, 26 years ago, somewhere around in that area, I had done something really stupid and I felt guilty about it. And I went um, and I went to go talk to a, a pastor and I said, I feel like that I need to step away from ministry, get myself together, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he says, wrong answer. You can never, you have to do what you've been put on this earth to do. That's where you draw your strength from. So true. If you give up because you think you have sinned and you can't go forward, then you only reinforce that God somehow doesn't forgive he doesn't restore he doesn't love so when when i say people people say he should step no i think this ought to be his driving force to produce some of the greatest music he's ever done before agreed because he draws his strength from his gift you draw your strength from your gift correct correct <laughs> and, watch this watch what the text says your gift will make room for you correct so that's that expanding and contracting. You get your strength from your gift. And so you cannot allow your gift to be put on hiatus because, and, you, you, and let me take it a lot, so a even a little further. I'm gonna say this uh, uh, as well. Uh, that's why I stopped leading worship years ago. I was ashamed. Uh, no, you cannot. Thank you for sharing that, Angela. Jo you cannot, you cannot let, <laughs> That thing, because then that means that's what defines you, not his grace, not his love, not his forgiveness, not his mercy. That other thing defines you. Yep. Your mistakes define you and you are not your mistakes. Your yep. mistakes, though, make you who you are. So they are the platform, the steps that you take to become better, yep. become greater and to become more. But they are not who you are. And so um, I, 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 and so when I when I say that. I think about, you know, all of the people who could have had the greatest impact on the world stepping aside because they don't feel like, listen, every Bible person that we read about had some stuff. Sure. They all had some stuff. Look what Isaiah said. I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. In other words, he was saying he's a cusser. He's I'm a cusser. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, he, you got Isaiah, you got David, you got all of these people had issues. And here's the deal. God does not need your perfection. He's got that covered. Correct. What God needs is your obedience and your mistakes cannot override your obedience. You've been told to do something. That's what you got to do. And, and here's the deal, Bishop. You know, um, you don't, you don't bench Michael Jordan. You keep playing the game. Come on, testimony. Yes. And another one. Jacob was a cheater. Peter was a temper, had a temper, was disloyal. David had an affair, set another man up. Noah was a drunk. Joel was a runner. Jonah was a runner. Paul was a murderer. Gideon was insecure. Miriam was a gossip. Martha was a warrior. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was depressed and had a drinking problem. Eli uh, Moses stuttered. Zacchaeus was too short. Abraham was too old. Lazarus was dead. At the end of the day, um, you do not use that as a reason to get out of the game. 
you acknowledge what you need to fix, and then you keep it moving. All right, come on. We got we only got 15 minutes left because y'all better get y'all questions in because, because, because my asking. guest gives these long answers. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right, Bishop. Uh, what what this is this is more personal. Um, what did you notice first about your wife? She's on here, and I want her to remain silent. <laughs> but did you, I'm just joking. What did you notice most about your wife that attracted you to her? You know, I told the story, I think, last week that um, I went up to her and told her that uh, she was going to be my wife. It was last week or the week before. But what I noticed when I walked into Which, the church, mind you, let me just say, is just, you know. That's pretty bold. That's pretty bold. That's pretty bold. Yeah. I, I, I don't lack on bold, though. I, I, no, I no, 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 you're high 57, sir. 57 bold spices. No, you don't like them. Uh, uh, and, okay, and I'm going to get, Karen, I'm going to get to your question. Uh, but uh, when I walked in church that day, like you see in the movies, literally, the thing that I noticed was like a spotlight, like shone above her, like she stood out amongst everybody in the crowd. You see my lips and my face. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, I know. You told me the story, was, so I know the answer. There was a light mm -hmm. that was shining on her that was pretty, pretty incredible. No. What was your driving force in the ministry? I will make that my 16th question. Are you on number 16 already? I know. That's what I'm saying. We're almost done. That's oh, my 16th cool. question. This is her question. What was your driving force in the ministry? What was I? What was my driving force in ministry? Really, the 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 real real desire to please God, because this is not what I wanted to do. It's the real real desire uh, to please God, and so um, that. But I also have to admit, my grandmother raised me to respect God. My grandmother raised me to trust God, and so she was also a very significant force. Uh, in my life because I needed to do uh, what I was supposed to do so that also she wouldn't be disappointed in me not doing what I was supposed to do. That is good. Um, this goes to, I'm going to ask it this way because we are on, this is, uh, we got five left. Okay. So um, I'm going to ask this because it actually, it, it speaks about your personality. Why have you and I, you and I have been friends for now going on six, 15 years. No, no, you, it was 2006. Six. Or five. Five or six. I think six. Six. Okay. So six plus what is 21? <laughs> it's going on 15 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. It's okay. basically in the 15th year, but it's a little bit later this year. Why have we been friends for so long? Because some have come and some have gone. No, no. Many have come <laughs> and many have gone. <laughs> and by many, just to be clear, we're talking about just that in our in our sphere of friends and interaction yeah. and acquaintances. Let's, let's get that. Because right. you know what? Both of us are straight shooters. We are straight shooters. Uh, we don't talk loyalty. We live loyalty. Um, and then there is a mutual respect for our strengths. That's true. And a mutual support for our weaknesses. Yeah. You know, we did a live last year during Corona time. It was probably about a year ago now about friendship. And we talked about our friendship and how we've been able to be friends and build one another, encourage one another. And uh, and you have been you have been you have been, you know, a, a, an integral part in um, the genesis of Harvest. You were around before Harvest was Harvest. Yeah. Was um, there a word? And look at my wife saying, and we're both touched. And touched. Wow. <laughs> silence. Silence that woman. Now, see, I always take her side. And you do. She comes you on always the take her side. Do like this. Uh, <laughs> you always take her side. I do always take her side. And now, this is how they do you. Everybody, let this be revelation. This is how they do you. You defend them, and then when you need them to act right with you, they come on the comment section. Talk <laughs> they come them. against you. Don't they do it? Yeah, that's what they do. Um, but yeah, so 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 you have been around um, since before Harvest was Harvest, and so you're right. We do have a mutual respect for one another. I I respect and honor who you are, 
um, uh, even though you've been my friend for all those, those years, you are Bishop Wright to me. Um, and that's so that we have moments, you know, where, you know, just a friend moments, but, but, but I respect you just like I stand for any other Bishop. I stand when you walk in the room and vice versa to honor the office of the Bishop. And that mutual respect is what I think is so powerful because you can't receive from what you don't respect. Um, and, and I think that's powerful. Last four and then no more. It's, somebody says it's a popular strip club in oh, the Dirty South. Oh, that's a, that's the P Valley. It's a oh. popular strip club in the Dirty South. I can I can't I think she meant can't say the other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> she says she can't say the other words because her husband Big Mike is looking. At her. <laughs> Come on, Big Mike. Ah. Big Mike is like, you bet not. Bet not. You better not say nothing else. You better not say nothing. Bishop, what are you most excited about in the next 12 months of your life? Oh, man, this is outside of the scope. I was going to make a big announcement. Um, but um, in the next 12 months, I will be finishing this new uh, levels of schooling that will add a couple of different certifications uh, to my resume. Uh, uh, which I am really excited about, but uh, something else is happening next year, and it's maybe in 14 months instead of 12, but next year is my wife and I's 30th, 30, 30th anniversary, and I have never been to Jamaica, and so I'm going to Jamaica. Come on, Jamaica. Can I get some Jamaica celebration in the comments? Yes, um, we're going to Jamaica. Jamaica. Jamaica music in the comments. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Listen, I'm going to rig this. Wait a minute. Uh, is he going to play some Jamaica music? Hold on, wait a minute. You know exactly what I'm going to do. Hold on. I'm just going right here. I don't know what this is. That don't sound like Jamaica music. This don't sound like, this sound like funeral music to me. That do not sound like Jamaica music at all. Oh, it's Angela Joy, you got to give me some tips about Jamaica. Um, yeah, you got to send me some tips. Well, I, listen, that's going to be a phenomenal tip. Uh, but Bob Marla, you need on. Okay. You know, okay, there you go. Well, I tried to get Jamaica, but the intro of that was not Jamaica. It sounded like um, a uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got three questions left, Bishop. These are the last three. Um, so, next, what if you were to exit the earth? tomorrow what would you want to be remembered for most honestly i would certainly want to be remembered as a person who in all things demonstrated love and the reason why i say that and i know this kind of cliche it's but the reason why i really say that is because um there's so much hatred and vitriol in the world um and I would love to, to be buttressed up against that as something different than that. Yeah. And that's for loving people and certainly for loving my family because I am a dedicated and devoted husband and father and grandfather and, um, and, uh, and my love for my friends because I take all of my relationships very, very seriously. And I don't, and and so I don't play with those. Uh, I, 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 and so I want, I would love to be remembered as a person who loved, who demonstrated love in all things, and a person who was absolutely loyal and obedient. I love that. I love that. Last two, Apple or PC? Now let me tell you, I have both, and I have always rode the Apple train. But I'm telling you, Apple is starting to really, really disappoint. I, know. I don't want to talk about it. And I've had, right. every, I've had every iPhone since the very beginning. Uh, my friends and my family, they talk about me because I'm one of the ones that as soon as another one comes out, I go and buy it. And it, my, the phone I have is perfect, but it doesn't matter. I go on and I buy that next one. Right. Yeah. And so, but they've been frustrating me lately. Because they have stopped innovating, they have stopped innovating, and and so now they're just recycling stuff, and and then the quality of what they recycle isn't very good. I about uh, 
I just bought a new phone. Listen to me talking crazy, but I just bought a new phone in November. But before I bought the, the new uh, iPhone, I almost bought a Galaxy. So I know I've, I've it, always been an Apple person, but you got me on Apple. Yes. So here's yes. the story. I used to be. First of all, I it took me forever back when cricket was just a local thing before cricket became national. Now AT and T bottom, but so I was good with my cricket flip phone. I remember the first text I got, and I got it, and I was like, you know, that's when you had to hit the number two three times to get to see. Um, yes, you know that's how you text. And I remember my first text, and I was like, why are you texting me? Just call. Me. I said, I don't understand. What is this text message thing? I didn't understand. And I liked my flip phone. It had amazing service. It had amazing service. Quality was good. It didn't drop calls. It was amazing. And I got a, um, I got a HTC back when they used to have the kickstands on them. I got a HTC phone. I loved that phone. And I, I, I had a BlackBerry and Bishop. I loved BlackBerry. Well, you know, I, I had love that. that. You had the trio. You had all of that. We had Blackberry. We had trio. We did all of that stuff. And you just thought, you just knew you were running the world with a trio. We had a little stylus. Man, look at him. And that little keyboard. Man, look at him. Yeah. Listen. You just knew it. You just knew you were in the world. And I had that HTC. And you <laughs> talked about me. You said I need to get an iPhone. I'm beef old. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, 143. Well, no, no. I well, love it. Let me tell you how old I am. We had to we had the phones where you had to stick your finger in the hole and turn it. And if you mess up, you, you can be on start all the way over. You got to start all the way over. Start all the way over. You who wait, let's hear it. Who came up with that? Like, why was that ever a good idea for a phone? Like, I why was know. that ever a good idea to let I, the thing? Why was that ever a smart thing? Yeah, I, I have no idea. You Talked about me. I switched to Apple and then I switched everything now. But I was diehard PC. You I did. switched over. And and uh I don't want to talk about it. I shouldn't have brought the question up. Last question. <laughs> and we are out of here, Bishop. Okay. Last question, and we are out of here. What do you enjoy most about ministry? Absolutely. I love being up in front of people talking and teaching and seeing them go, oh, oh, that's what that means. Or yes, that just happened to me. Or wow, I never understood it like that. So all of those things just, in, in other words, what I really like about ministry is impacting people, changing their life. I love it. I love it. Guys, do you have questions? For the bishop, you better get him in. We have Trace a minutos. two minutes. Or dos minutos. Dos minutos. While we're waiting on this, uh, while we're waiting on the questions to come in, Bishop, um, you and your wife did a book last year. We actually, uh, it, people can get it in our bookstore because for uh, for Harvest people, I know they did it, but they had to get. Where can they get it from? Do you, is it on your site? Uh, yes, you can go to I am Roy Bright. Um, and and tell them tell them about that book. That book is um, it's 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 about relationships and navigating. Uh, it, it's called Forever I Do, um, um, making it last forever. It's it's really about how to because I, I I've told this story before, but the first four years of uh, our marriage was torture, 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 torture. Yeah, but I can believe it. Once you she probably it. said one thing to you in one setting and then got your comments and just turned on. <laughs> and got the comments and just said some whole thing. <laughs> and um and a lot of it was my fault because I'm that that whole just my personality, I think a lot of it was my fault. Uh but regardless, it's about so how how do you make it last forever? That's good. That's good. So, thank, thank you, everybody. How often should married couples you didn't Oh, you mean bump and grind? Is that what the dash is? That's for? what she's asking. Oh, uh, Big Mike was looking at her again, so she couldn't. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. 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 Um, as often as you want. But you know what's scary, Bishop? I did a message, and the statistics were something like 25% um, of married couples, and I may be misquoted, sister, don't have any type of relations at all. 
Um, the wow. majority, it's once a month. And I'm just going to say this. If you're married. That's not no enough. That That's not enough. Uh, if you if you're married, because if you don't if you don't every day, oh come on now your wife is saved again. Um, if you don't if you don't if you're married with legal papers and God and all that, you have to say that because some people say well, we're just married in our own eyes. That does not count. Um, you got to say that we're just married in the spirit. That does not count. Um, if you are married. If you don't feed them, somebody else will feed them. And the food don't even have to be good. It's it just have to be good. Yeah, I'll drop in the mic right there. Uh, ma'am. It's seven o'clock, Bishop. Amazing, sir. You did an amazing job. And thank you. 21 questions. Now, now I'm dying laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like I cannot. All right. Hey. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Foreman, because I'm always doing all the talking, and this has been an opportunity for people to get I to know you. me and uh, for me to kind of answer some questions. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Next week, we're going to be talking about relationships, living together, loving together, and how many should be involved. Wait a minute. How many should be involved? Wow, that's going to be a show. So... I will see y'all next week, 7 o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel. Bye-bye. <laughs>